Okie doke, you are here. It's time to finally learn about Spybar MMIO. So the Intel hardware has a little subcomponent inside of it that is going to provide a interface to the Spy Flash chip. So that'll be baked into something like the PCH or ICH, and then it will actually communicate via the Spy protocol to the external Spy Flash chip, which as we said before, can have multiple things in it, not just the BIOS. Now in the simplest possible view of the world, you have some tool running on the CPU like flash ROM, chipsec, or a vendor-specific BIOS updater, and that takes a BIOS update and just magically somehow writes it to the spy flash chip. And so we're going to look behind the magic in this section. So a slightly less magical version would be to recognize that there exists some PCI config address space and that's going to have some sort of pointer to some other registers, which we'll refer to as the spy bar memory mapped IO. And that will give you your magical access to the spy flash memory. But the even less magical view of the world is to recognize that there is something like a PCH or an ICH or built into the SOC. There's some spy hardware subcomponent. And all of the accesses to these spy bar memory mapped IO registers are really mapping to registers inside of the spy hardware. And it's not fairy magic and wizard magic that gets you access to the spy flash. It's elf magic, specifically Keebler elves. So Intel is using Keebler elves inside of its spy hardware in order to translate requests over to the spy flash chip. So let's see how they do that. There's two forms of accessing the spy flash, hardware sequencing and software sequencing. Hardware sequencing is where you basically say, hey, hardware, do your thing. Elves, give me access. And you don't care about how exactly that works behind the scenes. So there's going to be some sort of memory mapped IO. And you're going to send a command request saying, like, set the address that I want to read from to hex 1000 in the spy flash chip. Set the type of action to read four bytes. And that is sent to the spy bar memory mapped IO. That gets translated down into the actual hardware control block for the spy access. And the elves convert that into a spy flash command. For instance, opcode 3 and size of 4. They pass it along and they send it over to the spy flash chip. And that's how you actually read 4 bytes from the spy flash chip. On the other hand, if you're using software sequencing, you're basically saying, I don't want to use the abstractions. I know exactly how I want to talk to the spy flash chip, and I'm going to tell you how. So here, instead, you specify, you know, I want this exact opcode for the spy flash chip, and I know that that's going to work on my particular chip. And you send that through the spy bar memory mapped IO registers through the software sequencing portion of them. And that will be handed down exactly as is, and the elves will pass it along exactly as is. Now, we saw earlier in the class spy bar very briefly when we were talking about RCBA and Rickerba. So we said RCBA, CBA, ABC, CBA, ABC, Mirror Universe Spock. R RCBA holds Rickerba, which is the base address for the root complex register block. So, base address, RC Cola can. In the manuals, you will find this description, which says the spy host interface registers are memory mapped in the RCRB, root complex register block, with a base address, which they call spy bar, of 3800. So, root complex base address, root complex register block plus 3800 is the spy bar location. And they helpfully tell you that the address of the RCRB can be found in the RCBA register. So, yes, lots of R register acronyms. But all you have to remember is RCBA holds Rickerba. So that's what we showed before. Device 31, function 0, offset F0 is RCBA, and it's holding Rickerba, the base address for the root complex register block. And what we said is hard-coded on these particular chips is that at hex 3800, that is where you're going to find the spy bar, spy base address registers, which are used for accessing the spy flash chip directly. Now, this only applies to the ICH9 and newer and up to the PCH9 uh, series. If you're 100 series or newer, it's going to be something different we'll talk about in a second. But actually, this particular mechanism existed even back further beyond the ICH9. It's just that this offset was different. It wasn't 3800. It was somewhere else in the RCRB. But, you know, that's all way too old for us to care about at this point. You can, of course, find that, though, if you go look at older manuals. 
So let's see how we find the spy bar on a newer system. So PCH100 series and newer, there is a dedicated spy interface now, which is device 31 function five. And at offset hex 10 in there, there's a field called spy bar zero MMIO. So offset 10 inside of PCI config address space is very literally the typical normal location where you would find base address registers for a PCI device. So in this case, the interpretation of it further along in the manual is that bits 12 and beyond are the membar field, which says where in memory should this base address register be mapped. And other things like mem size are just hardwired to zero to indicate four kilobytes of space. So we really just care about that membar field because basically it looks like this now instead. Device 31, function five instead of function zero, and offset 10 is the BIOS spy bar zero field, and inside of that is specifically the membar field. And the membar field doesn't exactly correspond directly to spy bar, but for our purposes, we're gonna say it does just for consistency to say spy bar is what we're going to refer to as the start of the memory mapped IO region that contains the registers. Registers are gonna behave the same way between these two things. It's just a different question of how you actually find them.